Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all right. It's a wet Wednesday and uh, I'm sat in the infants and I'm looking out at the rain pouring down and my class have got wild at heart today. Year two are doing wild at heart and I know lots of you have got games and PE outside, but never mind. Hay houses, we can manage. We'll just put our, our waterproofs on. I think PE might be inside today, boys and girls. We need to keep you fit and healthy though, don't we? So let's put lots of energy into that. Anyway, I'm here for worship time, so we need to begin, don't we? I hope you're all sitting comfortably. I hope you're all just having a calm moment, because I always think wet mornings at home, there always seems more rushing, doesn't there? And the car parking outside school is 10 times worse, and everything seems a little bit busier. And here in school, not only have we had wet weather, but then all of a sudden we heard this strange noise in the infants, and we all thought, is that the fire alarm? But it wasn't loud enough. But we knew it was something. Anyway, we tracked it down. It was the burglar alarm. But the burglar alarm shouldn't have been going because we were open. We turned it off in the morning. So something strange with the burglar alarm. But we'll sort it out. It was a very strange noise. So we've had lots of excitement and it's only half past eight. So uh, I hope you all have a calm day. So when you're watching this, I'm thinking calm the thoughts, trying to get myself in the right frame of mind for worship time. And you know, that's one of the really good things about every day meeting for worship because in a busy day and in a busy school day it gives us that time to think to be calm and just to reflect so if we're all ready if we're all feeling calm good morning everybody the lord is here his spirit is with us now I'm following on, not just with our parables theme, but with this idea that Mrs. Bashora was talking about yesterday, about things of value. And we heard the lovely parable of the pearl. And I always love that parable, because something very, very special about it. And at this time of the year, when we're thinking about harvest and all the gifts we're given. And when we're also thinking about parables and the value of God to us, the value, the kingdom of God, and what's special and what's important to each of us. So I've got two things to show you this morning. And uh, so shall we begin? I'll try and share this. So share screen, put my glasses on because otherwise I'll click on the wrong one. Something here just for us to think about. What's the thinking? Hopefully it'll come up, there we go. And, ooh. That's it, it needs to move that button before I can do this bit from the beginning. So, boys and girls, what is the most important thing in your life? Oh, just give yourselves a few moments to think about that. Just have a little bit of quiet. What's the most important thing in your life? Well, you might need to pause me for longer, but I probably need to carry on because I'll have a class waiting for me a little while if I pause for too long. I find that quite hard the most important thing, I'd probably have to group it as family because otherwise there's more than one thing. There's my, my girls, my husband, and then there's my wider family, my nephew and nieces and my brothers and sisters, brother rather, and sisters. And so, you know, most, most important thing I'd say with my family, but for all of us, it's different, isn't it? And, and you all know how special school is to me. So that's my school family. And then there's my faith family. So, you know, there's lots of things you will have thought about there. So maybe you and your teacher can have a chat about that. But I've put some, I've put some slides here. Let's have a little look and see. Have a think. I wonder if any of you have ever bought a national lottery ticket. And if you have, have you ever talked in your family, if you were millions, millions, what would you buy? Those are quite funny conversations in a family, depending upon your age and what you think of. Well, the last time I did this with a class, this was some of their ideas. They'd spend it on houses. I'll show you some pictures of those. Some of them wanted jewellery. We looked at the crown jewels yesterday. And our, well, no, we all did, didn't we? It wasn't in class. It was on Mrs. Bashura's assembly. And uh, so jewellery. I'm sure we don't have diamonds as big as that. But jewellery is very special, isn't it? Cars. Oh, we had a discussion about fancy cars that you might like. Yachts, private planes, holidays, fashion and beauty. Let's... Let's look at us in some of these pictures. Would you like a house like that? My goodness me, it's very, the, the thing, look closely. I couldn't believe, I'm putting my glasses on. Look where the cars are. Now you see, I'd be worried I'd get in the wrong gear <laughs> and go forward instead of backwards when I was coming out of that house. 
It's a bit like parking on a cliff top in Cornwall. My family know I don't like doing that. I always worry. And uh, I think there's a very nice swimming pool. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Fancy living there. You wouldn't need all those rooms all the time, though, would you? You can always pause this and have a chat about any of the things that come up. Oh, look at that one. Amazing. Oh, dear. Perhaps if you had millions, you could live there. If you wanted to, you might choose somewhere a little smaller. Looks a bit like Cinderella, um, house from the film. And, oh, a fancy yacht. Hope you aren't seasick. If you spend your millions on a fancy yacht, you'd have to know first, first of all, that you weren't going to be seasick, wouldn't you? Have to go for a, a motorboat ride on Fairhaven Lake first. Um, cars or yachts? I wonder what sort of car you'd have. I know lots of you like younger ones. You like the Hot Wheels, don't you? Sometimes look at those and think, if that was a real car, how amazing. See, I wonder what you, what would you choose? I'd choose just a tidy car at the moment. Mine's a bit untidy, as usual. Margaret's learning to drive as well, so I'm not driving mine very much. She's always jumping in. Uh, you might like fashion. Girls, boys, all of you might like fashion. Obviously, those are the girls' clothes, but you know, fashion's fascinating, isn't it? Constantly changes. Wonder what we'd have. But does money buy you happiness? Is it of such value that money, it has a value, obviously it's got a monetary value, we call it, um, but is it going to buy you happiness? Think about it, boys and girls. Think about it. I'm just going to stop this share because we're going to do a different one instead. So stop that share. So just for a moment, all those lovely things. If you had those millions, is that what you'd spend it on? Houses, fashion, cars, money. What is money valuable for? It can be valuable for lots of things, but what would you spend it on? What is the value of something? It's really important conversation. You could carry this on in class in circle time because it is something that as you go through life, you'll change your ideas. And as you get older, you'll start to realise because some of the things I'd love to have changed in life when people I loved were poorly, no amount of money in the world could have changed that. And um, that's, that's the hard thing sometimes. Money can't always do what we want it to. So can money make you happy? Or what do you value? What? Turn this, this question on its head. What makes you happy? Now, today, maybe sun shining would have made me happier. But I love rain, actually. We need rain. The gardens need rain. Uh, the pansies at my front door were wilting last week. And now they're, they're happy again because it's rained on them. I keep forgetting to water them. So God has done the watering, he's done the raining, and uh, they're happy again now. What makes me happy? When I go back into class in a few moments and everybody be telling me all the things they've done. And that's really special about getting a few days teaching because as a head teacher, you do spend a lot of time sort of just being on the edge of things in class. So it's lovely having a few days teaching. So perhaps when I finish with this bubble, I'll come in one of your other bubbles and have a go at teaching and uh, have a go. Sounds good, doesn't it? I think after 30 years, I do know what to do. It's just that uh, I can't always do that teaching. Although I know I've got lots and lots of letters to reply to and lots of things that parents have asked me. So I've probably got a busy few paperwork days. What makes me happy? Being with my family? You have a chat. Think what makes you happy while I start this next screen share. I've gone quiet so you could all talk. I know how you all like talking. So what makes you happy? You've been thinking about it and you can pause me for longer. You've got great power over the head teacher with these Zoom meetings, haven't you? You can pause me, stop me, have a chat about what makes you happy. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures. I want you to think about the pictures and then reflect upon it. First of all, I'm going to read you well, talk to you. It's a very short parable, this. I thought I'd found the shortest one with the mustard seed, but this one is even shorter, I think. I might need to count the words just to be sure. But I'm going to read this parable, show you some pictures, and then it's thinking time. Now, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found, and found it, and he covered it up, and in his joy he goes and sells all that he has, to buy that field because he knows the treasure that is in it. So think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment and have a little look. 
friends? Family and friends? What makes you happy? They're all smiling. Oh, those children at nursery having a cuddle, aren't they? Do cuddles make you happy? Friendship too. That's special, isn't it? Playtime. Wonder what that picture means to you. Maybe memories of happy days at nursery or when you were younger. <laughs> that just makes me laugh. <laughs> I don't know how they managed that one, but it made me laugh. So what makes you happy? Just having a laugh, finding something that just tickles your sense of humour, just amuses you. And everybody's different. Sometimes my girls send me pictures on my phone and, and sometimes they do just make me laugh out loud. But other ones, I think, I don't get that one, but that's my age. <laughs> Later on, they'll go, oh, mum, didn't you? And I'll go, well, no, explain. <laughs> so, uh, but different things make us all laugh, don't they? The only way to have a friend is to be one. I like that quote. I found that on quite a few things. And two are better than one, for if they fall, one will lift the other up. And that's a quote from the Bible. So between those two, the other one was, oh, can't go back to it now. That one, the only way to have a friend is to be one. That's a good quote, isn't it? Because friends, well, they make me happy. Do they make you happy? And if they're not making you happy, what needs to change? And if you know that as a friend, you're not making someone happy, what do you need to do to change it? And then let's go back to this one. Two are better than one. Mum and a daughter hugging. For if one, they fall, one will lift the other up. And then I love this picture. It's for getting older. And that's from the Bible, that quote, and that's lovely isn't it? And then this one, I've shown this one a lot in assemblies when we thought about it, there's two brothers and one helped the other over the finish line when one, all, he'd run out of absolute any energy and he needed to be pulled by his brother over the finish line and that's such a powerful image to me of brothers helping each other but friendship, family, love, loyalty, they don't look happy there do they because they've put all that effort into that race but it says so much. I know teachers, you might want to discuss that even more with your classes, but what makes you happy? And I think that, I'm going to stop that share now. You've had lots of pictures there to look at, lots of things to think about, and it needs discussion. And that's why Zoom assemblies are hard, because I'd love to hear your ideas. So perhaps in your classes, you can send me perhaps a list of what you feel makes you happy as a class, and what you value. And if we go back to that parable, the kingdom of, of heaven is like a man who finds the treasure in a field and he covers it up and he goes and he gets enough money to buy that field so he can have it forever. If you discover what makes you happy, what you value in life, then you need to hold on to it. You need to take whatever measures it needs to keep hold of that. The farmer bought that field, didn't he? So that he could keep hold of the treasure. And that's like the kingdom of God. When we find that treasure in heaven, the treasure with God, that gift God gives to us of power, confidence, faith, strength, love, all the wonderful things that our faith means to us. When we find that, we want to hold on to it. We don't want to lose it. So we take whatever it is to be that good person so that we can have that faith in our lives. So boys and girls, we need to find the value in our faith. We need to find what makes us happy in life. Hold on to it. Treasure it. It is your treasure. And maybe in your classes, make that list of what makes you happy. Make the list of what you treasure, what your faith means to you. And if you haven't got that far on your journey yet, where you know what that faith means to you, this is where school can help where we're helping you on your journey. And any mums or dads watching this at home with your children, Willow class, hello. And any other mums and dads who tune into our YouTube channel, we're all on a journey of faith. We're all finding what we value and what we treasure. Pandemic and lockdown gave us lots of time to think, didn't it? Lots of times to really reflect upon what we value. Hold it close, treasure it, do everything we can to keep it safe because it's very, very special. Put your hands together, close your eyes, Let's just draw, draw our thoughts together. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to treasure everyone we love, everything that is special to us in life. Help us to know its true value. And in these worrying days and difficult times, help us to find happiness in the small things, in the special and important things. Help us to be a good friend around us and help us to show the love you brought into our world through your son, Jesus Christ.
We ask this in his name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, have a lovely Wednesday. It might be a wet Wednesday, but we can still have a happy time at Hay Houses. See you all very soon. Bye. <laughs>